Why does God allow demonic oppression? Why does God allow demons to attack you or not be healed or not be answered? We'll talk about Paul, Saul, and Job, who obviously had demonic attacks, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who went crazy because of God. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why. There are some reasons like pride, disobedience, sin, no relationship with God, laziness with God, and not doing His will. We'll talk about how to be delivered and how I overcame, and how to prevent from being demonized in the future. So yeah, let's start with, uh, well, let's talk about why does God allow wickedness and evil in our lives? Well, God simply uses these things to get your attention. Uh, for you to realize that you need to stop paying attention to the world or loving yourself and then not doing what God wants you to wants you to do um, I've seen many people who are demon possessed uh, Their main problem is that they're very very prideful. They're very very Self-righteous even though when I look at them, you know, I don't I don't think they're even close to uh, Being hu humble in any way. They just think they're humble. and They think they have no problem with sin and I look at them and they're continuing to sleeping with their boyfriends and girlfriends and I'm like you know the reason why you're not delivered in the first place is because you continue in sin Jesus after healing the man in John chapter 5 he said sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you uh, is it God's will for you to be healed and delivered it is surely God's will for you to be totally free from demons Jesus cast out demons all day long he also gave us the authority and power to cast out devils so you need to cast out devils but if you're casting out devils and they're not going well there are obviously certain problems not with God but with our life and our life must be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ because if it's not you're not even born again and you're servant of sin you're servant of your own self this is gonna go nowhere and I've seen many cases uh, these people are very um, who are demon possessed very self -ex exalting they do their own things and they somehow think there's somebody in the in the Lord. They just think they're a prophet, prophet like all these kind of things. And they think they're very, very spiritual people. Well, well, we're nothing before God. We need to be nothing. You know, when Paul, Paul had blindness come upon him because he, he was persecuting Jesus and Jesus just blinded him. And what did what does Paul do? He fasts, he doesn't drink water, he doesn't eat for three days. He's just in the sackcloth and ashes, just weeping and crying for his wickedness because of what he's not crying because he became, oh, I became blind. No, he's not crying because, you know, all this evil has come upon him. He's crying because he found himself to be a wretched sinner and he was truly repenting from his heart. And Ananias came uh, because the Lord sent Ananias to say, hey man, this guy's repenting. Go and heal him. I'm ready for him to be used for the gospel. So he gets healed. Okay, again, Paul gets another demon's attack. Later on, he, he gets a lot of revelations from God. Maybe he's seen heaven and, and has a lot of revelations that he wrote half of the gospel of the New Testament. And his is a mir miracle, glorious work that he did for the Lord, right? But he gets Satan to buffet him. A thorn in the flesh, the Bible says. And, he, and he's like suffering, he's like pleading with the Lord three times. He, he prayed for healing, I mean, he's doing healing. He's casting out devils, I mean, he's doing mighty miracles of God. And he himself has a thorn in the flesh, a, a messenger of Satan came. So basically he had a devil, a demon in his body, I don't know where, but uh, giving him pain. And, and, he, and God said, you know, my grace is sufficient for, for you. And, and it clearly it says right here, um, 2 Corinthians 12, 6 to, through 10. For though I do desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. You, you desire to glory, but you shouldn't be a fool looking after these things, right? For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. So there was given to him a thorn in the flesh, because a way to humble him because he didn't he, God was maybe afraid that he may be um, overturned to Satan by becoming prideful or be, by thinking that he's somebody so great in the gospel when actually we are nothing all things are given to us all the things are given even this salvation is given to me as a gift I don't deserve this I don't deserve the gifts of the Holy Spirit it is a gift of God it's, it's a gift it's something that you never deserved in the first place. we don't deserve it 
but because God is good, He gave it to us all these abilities. But if we now think we're somebody because we got this power, we got this faith, we got this whatever in the Lord, we got this knowledge, then He's like, you know, you need to be careful that you don't you you don't yourself become Satan in the end. Because Satan exalted himself as a prideful being and, and he's like, watch out, pride is the number one reason why you will be um, caught with the snares of the devil. Now, many people are not like Paul. We're not at, at his levels, honestly. You know, I don't see much people at Paul's level of dedication and, and his enthusiasm for God. And so most people have what is called um, demons that come because they have open doors to sin. You know, they are lying, kind of constantly cheating. They don't even pay tithes and offerings, which is uh, recorded by Jesus Christ. Don't leave that undone. Matthew 23, 20, which was showing the minimum, minimum, which the tithes are minimum. The law of the God, law of the law of God was minimum things. You shouldn't kill. But the law of grace is even higher. You shouldn't even, you know, have thoughts of hating somebody because that's murder in your heart. You shouldn't even lust after with your eyes because that's already adultery in your heart. You know, God's, God's uh, grace law is much higher. And God l gave a 10th commandment just to give 10% as a minimum giving, you know, that you should do at least 10%. And that was a tithing law. And people should, should think, well, that's the minimum. Well, grace is the maximum. People sold their houses, everything, and gave freely whatever they had. Do, do you understand that the law of grace is much higher? People don't even tithe. So, so the devil comes into your pockets and then start attacking your finances, attacking this and that. And you don't know why, why God, why God's allowing these things to happen. Well, why are you letting the devil to control your heart to be greedy in the first place? You should be giving and generously giving more than 10%, 10% is the lowest, but generously giving, you know, and, and, and people obviously uh, don't do that. Again, the Bible talks about repentance is a key. It's the first word that comes when the gospel of Jesus Christ was given to people. They said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent was the first word to enter into the kingdom of heaven where freedom of Christ is. So uh, also here it says, God may perhaps grant, grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and they may come to their senses and escape from the snares of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. So people are captive by, captivated by the devil doing the devil's will without their knowledge. And God's saying, um, God may perhaps grant them repentance if you come to those people gently, nicely, and, and instead of like, uh, you know, harshly correcting them, you correct them in love and in, and in uh, purity of heart, then they may be given granted repentance that they will be free from the devil that had captured them. Do you understand? See, so, so, so many Christians, so many people who believe in God, many of them are captured by the devil. Their heart just loving the world, just loving these senseless uses, vain things of this world, the vanities of the world. And their eyes and my hearts are all captivated, captivated by the devil. And basically, God's, God's saying, if, you, if, you, if, they, if God would grant them repentance, they'll come to their senses and be able to escape from the wiles of the devil. So what is capturing the, the Christians? Is they don't repent of loving the world. If you love the world, if you love the things of the Father's love, it's not in you, and you're not a child of God, but you continue to sin like, you know, like, you know, like hell's next day kind of, you know, lifestyle. You just do whatever you want. You don't have any relationship, God. You know, God wants a true relationship, and that's what I've been focusing, that you will build your own personal relationship. When you have your personal relationship, you will be free. God will free you Himself. How did I get free from demons and devils? I I'm for sure had lots of demons because I was drinking, smoking, partying, sleeping in girls and this and I, I, had, I opened my door to totally wide open to sin. And even though as a Christian, I, I pretty sure was highly demon possessed, okay, at the time. So how did I get delivered? I, I, I repented all my sin. I repented of my life's idol, okay, of loving, uh, focusing on, the, on, on girls. Okay, and I, I gave that up. I was like, you know, that is my idol. I'm giving this up. I totally let it go. And that's when God started leading me because I made Jesus Christ literally my Lord and my Savior, my literal Lord, my Master, before I believed in Him as my Lord and Savior. But I didn't do anything about it. But now I truly from my heart made Him my Lord. Like, Lord, what do you mean to do? I made Him my Master. And He led me and He delivered me Himself. 
you know, I went to church and God delivered me with fire that just came down. I saw black things leave my body. Uh, pretty sure that was devils, but you know, God did much miracles, things like that. And so, so is my my own, a person that I know um, that he also got delivered this way. He was heavily into uh, demonic stuff, and he got highly demonic possessed. And what what he did, he totally gave his life over to Jesus. He started worshiping God, praising God all day long, all day long, praying in tongues and and things like that. And he himself got delivered one day. God just delivered him. It took like kind of like a month or two, okay. Well, and and you know many ministers tried to cast out devils and heal them and whatever. It didn't work because the main problem if God allows it, nobody can just cast out the devils, okay. But if God comes in and there is okay, I'm I'm delivering now. Get out devils. And they'll totally leave. Now, where can you find this? You, you know, the king Nebuchadnezzar, he was very high-minded, prideful king. And he himself became cuckoo. Why? Bible says that Lord God, a holy one, came and declared him going to be crazy for seven years. Because he exalted himself. And he said, unless this guy humbles, him, humbles himself and acknowledges that I give this king position to whoever I choose, I'm gonna make him go nuts and, and, and go crazy. And he did make him go crazy for seven years. And, and we would think like craziness are probably demon, yeah, probably highly demon possessed, okay? And, and he went crazy for seven years until he, he declared God is, God is the one above all and I'm nothing, I'm nobody. And then God, I guess, freed him from that. You know, because this is, this is all about pride. Look at Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 15. Now, the Spirit of the Lord was on Saul. He was anointed and he prophesied by the Spirit of God. I mean, he, at that time, literally, to, to be like a, a true prophet of God. I mean, he was speaking prophecies and he, he was anointed to be a king. And he had gifts of the Holy Spirit in a way, in that sense, right? But that King Saul disobeyed God twice. Uh, he didn't fully fulfill God's commandment. And what did he do? He just allowed people to to do whatever they want and then by that he disobeyed God so Samuel got really angry and God already said you know I, I you know that's it I'm not I'm not uh, anointing as king anymore so what happened the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord it says from the Lord from God troubled him and Saul's servant said unto him behold now an evil spirit from God troubled thee do you understand who who allowed the evil spirit God sent an evil spirit to Saul. Do you understand? And many, many people say, well, it's so, it's so unloving. No, no, God allows the devil to come so that you may come to repentance. But did King, King Saul really repent from his heart and cry out like King David? No, he didn't. King David also had a little bit of, of, of a sin problem, okay? He, he, you know, as we know, he slept with Bathsheba and killed the husband, right? Basically in a war. So as a murderer, as a as adulterer, he should be pretty pretty far off. But what when uh, Prophet Nathaniel convicted him of sin, he just knelt on his knee and he fasted and he cried for seven days, and God still didn't let go of the punishment. The son still died. The punishment of 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 uh, unto King David was so severe that he became skinny. His his bones, his body was getting cold when he's getting old. I mean, literally, uh, you know, all his sons sons had a lot of trouble obeying him and then you know like Absalom went against him and things like that many murders happened in, in his family because of his the result of his sins and 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 you might say well well you know well he he was the most beloved of God you know do you understand King David his heart was totally after God he had visions of God he was singing psalms I mean I mean you know you, you know he had a faith like none other I mean you're talking about King David who killed Goliath Okay, this kind of man of faith, this kind of man whose heart is after God's heart. Him having a bunch of troubles, and there is this uh, uh, kin to Saul, and he started kicking the dirt at uh, King David. He started throwing stones, rocks and stones at him, and things like that, all the way up. And then, you know, his, uh, the King David's uh, soldiers were like, should we just kill it? Can we just kill this guy? And King David said, if it pleases the Lord that I, I get mocked like that, then let him do that. Let him continue. Okay, if it, if it, if I get any little bit of pity from the Lord, you know, by get doing this, let him do this. So, so, so King David was totally now submitted to the Lord, and even when uh, they found a beautiful, most beautiful girl, Abishah, Abishah to 
to sleep with King David because it's King David's body is getting cold and weak and just they don't know what to do. So they just like found a really beautiful girl and put him, but King David didn't sleep with her anymore. You know, King David's like, no, I refused. Why? Because he learned the lesson of sin and he's like, this woman problem got me so much problem. I'm refusing this and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, and he it really showed a total repented life of King David. Do you, do you know? And he, you know, we have to understand, hey, maybe this demons, uh, maybe these bad things are happening. God is trying to show your idols so that you will rebuild your relationship with God and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because if, if, even if you get delivered, healed from all kinds of troubles in this earth, and then like Kraz and Basala was judged by God to go to hell, what's the point of being healed and showing all the miracles of God if you're not going to submit to God and obey God? So, for, for God, it is more important that you get right with God, repented, and living a holy and submitted life to God, than for you to live like a total um, wild person to God. Do you understand? Now, sometimes the devil is used by God to tempt. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted by the Satan for, for uh, three times because the Spirit of God led him to in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So God sometimes uses a uh, devil as a test. Adam and Eve was tested, tempted by the devil, and they of course failed, and that's why we're in this place. But but God uses these things to test his creation, whether they would obey God or disobey and listen to the devil, well, whether they would belong to God or they would belong to the devil. So Jesus was tempted and the Bible says God doesn't allow the devil to tempt you beyond what you're capable of. That means God's gonna use the devil to tempt you. Do you understand? And how then can you overcome all these things? You know, as by my experience, uh, maintaining every day a true, uh, dedicated relationship to seek the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, in prayer, dedicated time. I, for me, I, I say two hours, about at least minimum two hours of quali quality dedicated time between you and God. And you shouldn't think this is a work or some legalism. You should embrace this opportunity and time like, oh wow, I'm gonna seek the Father. Wow, yeah, great God. Great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna seek the Father. I'm gonna spend time with Him in love because I love spending time with God. Because I love Jesus, I love Father, I love Holy Spirit. I didn't want to just give my best time, my best things unto God, and which is my dedication, my focused time with God. You will love to do this instead of making it long. And naturally, as you spend time with God, God protects you from demons and devils as you naturally obey the commandments of God, which we are told to obey His commandments. Um, as you naturally do that, you will be free. God will set you free from all kinds of problems and troubles and devils and demons. And these kind of things. And, and rather than that, God will start blessing you, financing, blessing you with your health, blessing you with all kinds of things. All things shall fall naturally to you once you give your total heart to God. Okay? God, God will test you, you know, like Job. Job was the most righteous man, but all his stuff were taken away by the devil. And God allowed Satan to, to, to tempt him. Okay? Now, um, many people might not agree. Well, oh, you know, God just delivered. Doesn't he deliver? Yeah, he does deliver. He does even give us a power to cast out devils. If they come and they have no right to be there, you can definitely cast them out in Jesus' name. But it's, it's, if they are here because of your sins or, or your unforgiveness, they will in no regards leave, leave you. Do you understand? If you don't get it right with God, the trouble is not with the demons. If your trouble is with God, if your problems are with God and God has something, something against you, then no matter what you cast out this devil, they won't go. They will not leave. Like for example, let's look at Matthew um, chapter 18, 34. Now, this servant didn't forgive others of their debts. He didn't forgive other people's sins. But his sins were forgiven by the, his master. But, you know, because he didn't forgive other people, the Lord says, verse 18, uh, chapter 18, 34, Matthew, and his Lord was wroth. He was angry. The Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors. It would be modern day demons, okay? Demons. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Why? Because he didn't forgive other people who sinned against him. We, if you don't, and then you believe in Jesus and all this stuff, Jesus is going to 
deliver you to the torment and, and Jesus and God was angry with with him he was angry I was like I forgave you of your sins you shall also forgive those who sinned against you. you you should also but he didn't so therefore he was delivered to the tormentors now this is, this is all same logic if you don't get right with God you know and if you don't forgive other people what are who am I who do who am I that I deserve to be forgiven and I'm, I deserve not to forgive others huh who am I we're both all sinners we're all wicked and evil people. If you don't realize that you're a wicked, evil sinner who needs to come to God with repentance and with humility, then God resists the proud and He will not deliver you. Like I said, I've, I've seen people, they, they come with this haughtiness. They, 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 their head is so huge with so much deliverance knowledge. And I tell them, hey, uh, did you repent? I said, I repent of all sins. I don't even know what to repent anymore. And then when I ask, you know, these, these things, like um, you know, or you know, then you know, you need to humble. Then I was like, I'm already humble. I don't know what else. How else can like hey, calm down? You know, you need to really humble yourself and and really seek God with all your heart, and He will Himself let you be delivered. It, it, he He will, you know. I, I've seen I've seen another um, very anointed person who who sang the prophecy like, and we're all crying and bawling in tears because I mean the presence of God was so strong with this person, but she herself is a cripple. I, I saw this person, her, her was like literally crippled. But, but the presence of God that, that she brought through her uh, prophetic singing uh, is just, just melted everybody. But we're just wondering, why is her hand like, you know, like seem like almost, you know, probably maybe it's a messenger of Satan in her body, just, just made her cripple. And you know, it's a crippling spirit. And then she, she herself has so much other powerful gifts. I don't, and we, we, we are just, you know, so I've seen these cases. And it's not that she's unholy, whatever. Maybe it's because the power and the anointing she has is, is such such a great, so so great, like maybe like Paul, you know, a messenger of Satan came to humble her in her flesh. And Paul says, Paul said he he would rather be, he be, uh, uh, rather be in his infirmities. Verse 10. Here we go. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You know, he said, you know, I'll, I'll let most gladly, uh, glad, gladly uh, rejoice in and be happy in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Do you understand? So God may bring all these troubles to maybe keep you humble, and keeping you humble is very very important because if you're high mind like the devil guess what like he kicked get kicked out you we, we also will be dismissed we also may be dismissed from heaven if you don't humble yourself you don't learn to submit to god in many cases i learned to uh by by god god's beating me when i got lazy with god when i got lazy with my relationship god i don't pray maybe i pray like one hour i was kind of half-heartedly pray one hour and also busy with life and then things like that i just they totally diss god and then a couple like one two days guess what the first or second second day the demons came and started like you know try to torment me during the night time and i and i started you know Fighting those devils and casting them out, and really start praying, 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 and ask God for forgiveness. And and if I didn't, if I didn't, um, um, like pray or whatever, oh, the devils will bring a bunch of temptations that I cannot overcome. So I learned the hard way of learning to be dis, dis disciplined by the Lord. And it, and right now, yeah, I know the the ways how how things work, and I can tell you this is how you need to be free. So when you really pray in the Spirit of God, and when you get filled with the fire of God, the devils can't touch you. God sends you angels. God, God is doing all, all, all kinds of stuff against the enemies to, to not be able to touch you. Do you understand? God has full control. If you do not believe that God has full control, that He even doesn't even let a sparrow fall to the ground without His consent, then definitely the devils cannot just touch you and, and harass you without, without God allowing it. Either you're being destroyed because you don't have the knowledge, or uh, uh, of that that you can cast out them, or or you're being destroyed because your relationship with God is not right, and God wants you to your relationship with God to be right. The people of Israel were, were always thrown to their enemies' hands whenever they rebelled against God, and God God delivered 
God He Himself delivered the Israel people to be to be to be killed, to be raped and pill pillaged by all these neighboring enemies of His, like the Philistines, for example. They were killed, tortured, became slaves of Babylon. All these kind of things happened because of Israel's disobedience to God. I'm telling you. Hey, we're no different. We're also children. If you do not obey Christ, if you do not submit to Him daily and, and die to yourself and live for Him, well, you, you, you are going to see all these attacks and problems happen in your life. There is no other secret. As they, we are all saying, all saying, okay? Don't think, oh, well, I'm some of, son of God now. I can to do whatever I want to do. No, the true sons of God do what the Father wants them to do. Understand? So I hope you get this truth and, and help as many people as possible. Amen. So God bless you. So let's end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you, Father God, for your word. I just ask that you please, Lord, make us humble and submitted unto your will. Father God, please bless us with this knowledge and help, our, help us to get our life right, to get our relationship with you right. Help us to not lie, steal, cheat, or, or be committing adultery or loving the world. Father God, take us out from this lukewarm faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We give you all the praise and glory unto your name. Jesus, Father God, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what you, what you shall do is several things. Praise. Praising God. Worshiping God. Prayer. Okay? And then using the Word of God. And always dwelling in here. Okay? Always studying the Word of God. Meditating upon the Word of God. It's very, very important. Okay? And fasting. Fasting like Isaiah chapter 58 fasting, you know, with the true heart. Read it, read it, go read it. Okay? And and really just seeking your seeking God from your heart, giving real time with God and forsaking all your idols. And okay, and also the blood of Jesus Christ. You need the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. Sanctify your heart and mind against the devil. If demons continue to give bad wicked dust, plead the blood of Jesus diligently. Okay? And in the name of Jesus Christ with authority, you cast them out. Okay, with, with these, it may take a month or two months for you to be totally free. But I, I guarantee you, if you totally give your life to God, God will deliver you in His time. And I've experienced it. It took me, you know, real dedicated. I was just totally dedicated and, and He delivered. So was my friends. So was other people. So was all the other people. They rededicated their life to God. And I'm, I tell you, that is the way to be delivered. Amen.